I want to write about and how I've navigated protecting people. French Boy is actually a composite of two, two different people. So the story is real, but merged. And as far as I know, both of them are doing okay. Um, sometimes I don't, so many people have come to me, you know, in the last like 15 years of doing this job and then being on the uh, receiving end of a lot of good and bad news about people. Uh, I'm kind of glad that I don't actually know the body count. <laughs> um, you know, and if it meant that I needed to know the body count in order to know the success stories, I think I still wouldn't ask. I don't think I can handle it. Um, but I'm glad you asked. Um, this is also the point of the show where I tell you uh, we don't have a really, really strict curfew. We have a little bit of a curfew. Um, this, show, this show is three hours. Is also why we've inserted an intermission. Uh, um, but also, uh, I have developed um, a useful trick for this show that I'm calling the wild card. If at any point you just can't handle it, you can put your hand up, don't do it at a moment that's obviously stupid, and say, Amanda, I'm too sad. <laughs> and I will play you the opening chords of Coin Operated Boy. <laughs> as a palette cleanser. I remember putting, you know, putting it down and paying the 
three hundred bucks or whatever it was. And I remember thinking like, oh god, this is so weird. Like this costs three hundred dollars and my mom's paying for it. You know, like went to the mall buying a pair of shoes. And also my boyfriend, who was so sweet, he he went out and he got me as a get well present a Christmas cactus. <laughs> which I vowed I would keep alive. <laughs> because, obviously, like, so it was And then, like, three weeks later, I hadn't watered it, and it died. <laughs> And like, if that wasn't a good song metaphor, I don't know what fucking was. I just remember thinking a million times, like, you gotta write the Christmas Cactus song, that's too good. Um, maybe that's not such a good Maybe that's too crass. Um, you know, and I also just felt like, again, like I didn't really, I didn't know if it was allowed, I didn't know what I was and wasn't allowed to harvest from my own life. I already had people telling me that I was being tasteless and attention-seeking and narcissistic for writing about anything. I was like, if they're saying that about me writing about disappointing men, what are they going to say if I write about me having an abortion? I'll get crucified. And I tip my best. If you know the Dresden Dolls' second record, there's a, there's a very, very black humor song about abortion called Mandy Goes to Med School. And when it, it tells you a lot about my head as a songwriter that my way, finally, into writing about abortion is like, I know, I'll cast me and my drummer as zany back alley abortionists in my jazz song. <laughs> So I did that, um, and then for my first solo record, I again, like, I couldn't manage to write about the topic without, like, dousing it in black humor. I mean, that was really the only way I could find in. Writing about it sincerely just seemed impossible. So I wrote this very short one, which I will play you because it's very short. You might know it. When I got to the park 